pleasant Sunday night to y'all. Coming in before the storm. Got a nice little shot of Jupiter here with a little critter eyes. Just getting set up a little bit. I wasn't sure if it was gonna rain or not, so I had to make a snap judgment. It's looking all right here. What's going on, chat room? How's it going, boys? What's up, Cat C? What's up, Bomb Dia? What's up, Mary? What's going on, Michael Wise? Nah, I don't think I'm evacuating. I think it's gonna be all right. What's happening, Cleary? Yo, thanks, up, guys. Since I've been following you for years, appreciate that. Still going strong. The end of 2019, or closing in towards the winter. 2020 should be a very interesting year for scoping. Let's zoom in here a little on Jupiter. tomorrow. I'm going to sleep in again. It was good. say and nothing at the same time. It's just good to be alive right now. The world is kind of crazy and I just keep thinking how amazing and what, I don't want to say lucky necessarily, but we get to exist in this time where Earth is not in an ice age yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible. storm windows. I think it should be all right. I've been working on some new tunes. Stuff coming soon. I want to get at least a few new tracks ready for the next full moon. Also, it's September. Lots of new developments. I was watching all these different news reports. I found some really incredible photos of, uh, from the Apollo 16 missions of uh, UV telescope shots of Earth from a distance. It's very amazing. I'm going to gather some more links. What's happening? Shockwave has go away. what's going on. Jupiter's already setting. We're starting to set.
feel wiped out. <laughs> I'll be honest. But it's good taking advantage of the skies whenever I can. Exactly. Shocker says Jupiter the Destroyer, aka Nibiru. Absolutely. Quick uh, note check out the description for some excellent Electric Universe channels. I highly recommend going through that. Take a look at the Electric View. I've been hanging out with those guys. I've been on a couple of the streams recently, or the videos. Electric Universe Eyes did some great stuff this week, and always really, but recently it's just getting better and better. Kronos, Greg J, did the Purple Dawn, Electro Terravision, Thunderbolts Project, of course. See the pattern. Yeah, give those guys some love. Yo, what's going on, C. Smith? Oops. Hey, Space Fam, I was so hoping for a stream tonight. Two weeks camping and not one clear night to view SMH. Yeah, I was just sitting on the porch, just waiting for the skies to clear enough to, to see Jupiter and Saturn. And I uh, got kind of, uh, I got a little sleepy, I'll be honest. <laughs> so I was sitting, sitting, and waiting. I was thinking like, nah, it's done all cloudy early. I wanted to catch the moon. Didn't happen. Yeah, Chakra says, it's a shame I came into the EV show late today. Like I said, I, I was totally wrapped up in other stuff and I just felt it. I At least I got in for the last bit. Next time I'll be more, I'll set an alarm. All right, I'm gonna pep myself up a little bit. Let's do a cool little space stream in honor of all the pain that's going on today, or to honor all the victims of all these weird, crazy incidences around the world, and thank that we're just like able to sit here and enjoy this view. So, stuff in Odessa, and then the Bahamas, and it's just really difficult. I'm sure there are many other difficult things going on today. So my heart goes out to all those people. Sincerely, it's like, what can we really do except sit here and experience it? But maybe a group of people being cool and sending out good vibes is, is something. All right, let's check out Kronos. Kronotodos. I'm gonna switch up the track here real quick.
samples. Actually, you know what? I'm missing my little pop filter. And I know it's going to be a little bit abrupt, so I'll be right back. Oh, it's just going to pop too much, so I'll be right back. I'm going to get that. Everybody just joining. Let me see if I missed you. Buttercup, how are you? Old and found. Welcome. Light moon. And I think that's it. Let me know if I missed you. Welcome, everybody. Good to see the space family come together, as always. So we got some Saturn, Kronos in view. Obviously, Titan is the brightest to the top left. And I'm just going to let you know what other moons we got. Perhaps Iapetus. And Duplicat, thanks for the compliment. I've been trying to get into that, and I finally made the leap to the electric view, so the guys have been so nice and welcoming. All right, so to the, to the bottom left, I guess, or to the left, basically, of Saturn, that's Tethys, 9 o'clock, and then at the 2 is Rhea, underneath that is Enceladus, and to the right of that is Dione. Hyperion is top right, and Iapetus is very far to the left, almost not visible. So a nice Saturnian system. Really dig it. How can you not? C. Smith says, how am I holding up? I don't know, the skies have been rainy in the afternoons, like interesting clouds, and awesome mixed patterns, and then blue sky, little pockets of blue skies. At the same time, then this evening it was all gray and black, covered up the moon. And then right now it looks kind of nice, there's a bit of a haze, but Saturn and Jupiter are pretty clear. I'm going to shift over quickly to like a less gain shot of Saturn so we can see some detail. I'm gonna put on this track real quick. Actually, did I upload it? All right. This is uh, kind of new. Let's do it. Race to space. Like the inner light corner on the beach outside of hell. 
It's just an amazing view right here. Pulled up the 3X magnifier. I got some more people joining. What's going on, Kimmy? Evening. What's up, Jax? And what's up, Justin? And Rockstar? And 24-7, what's happening? I've been 
throwing some new tracks together. Definitely gonna like aiming for a full moon drop with some new tracks for y'all. A bunch of them. It's gonna be a nice ramp up towards the full moon. I saw it today in the daylight. And then of course when I set up this evening, complete cloud cover. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow, perhaps a little bit of moonage. Vibrational mental 
All right. A little bit of jams. See some people showing up. What's going on? Who else joined? Where is it? What's up, Kimberly Schick? What's up, Dude Highness? And anybody else? So, came back to Jupiter for a second because it's setting. We'll lose the view in a second. But I found out where Pluto is. So it is to the top left of Saturn. Let's see what's going on with that. Perhaps I can I can hone in on it. We'll see. I've never really tried for Pluto before because I've always been like, the magnitude's too low. But... Um, Maybe. So we'll say good night to Jove. Even though the, the moon system on Jove is looking excellent tonight. Thank you. 
I'll just quickly. What's up, Happy Honey Big Bear? And what's up, Corey? And whoever else is just joining. Happy birthday, Kimmy. And I was trying to look at look for Pluto with the three X. Those were the trying to take some long exposures. But what I'm going to do now is kind of focus with the wider shot, see where Saturn is, trying to head back to Pluto. Doesn't seem really possible to to see it in the viewfinder. So I'll have to use some tricks. I'm going to keep trying. Give it a few more minutes. Starlight, what's up, eat all your fish, what's up, Mario, and, and everybody else joining, just taking some long exposure shots of Saturn, that's what you're seeing, so this is really a good way to see all the moons and all the stars around Saturn, that's what's going on your screen, so thanks a lot, Mario, welcome, please check out the description, and this goes for everybody new. Please check out the description of the video for cool links, links to the music, and uh, great electric universe and plasma cosmology people. Just uh, a few curated channels. And check out past archives, please, as well. So there have been a lot of years of space, and uh, I've curated a good bunch of them. So, and thanks for hanging out. Am I near the hurricane? Looks like it might have been coming this way. It still might, but we shall see. Yeah, it definitely looked like we were in the path of it for a while. Tampa. What's going on, Authentic Max? How we doing? I'm doing all right. Just been looking, trying to get a shot of Pluto, which uh, is a rare opportunity. Right now, I'm not doing anything. I just have the camera. <clears throat> the picture that I just took pulled up. So this is a picture of Saturn with all the moons. And I want to zoom in. Y'all you, can see them. It's 
So this is like a three and a half second exposure with the, with the game pulled up all the way. This is how I'm gonna try and find Pluto because it's not an easy thing to spot in the reticle. That's what's going on. 1136, appreciate everybody's presence. Good vibes, space tunes, and kindness because man, this world is really difficult for a lot of people. And I feel like it's very lucky that we get to have night after night of existing. All right, looking for a new tune. Let's switch it up, go to some older stuff. What about... This one's vibey. Little mantra. Buried Axe Blade. Um, all right, so this is in the general vicinity of Pluto. I'm pulling up Stellarium to see if I can match some location. Stars. Try and finish your thought. <laughs> interesting cluster which should be that bright star at the top say it's not not really coming together this is the this is the proper region but I can't really <laughs> tell where I am there's no like defined star these are all just like random stars in the vicinity and Pluto I mean the magnitude is 14 it's like almost impossible to see actually <laughs> it could be crazy but these are some of the shots in the vicinity of Pluto. What's happened, fantasy? <laughs> exactly, duplicates like there it is, that itty t <laughs> itty bitty little thing in the center. I'm taking these long exposures, but 
can't make it out for the life of me. Like, let's zoom in here for a second. I think I know what the string of stars is. Um, but it's, I'm not 100% sure. So this is basically where Pluto would be, if we could. <laughs> Authentic Maxis, there are more spit spots on my laptop than stars. It's pretty funny. All right, let's head back to Saturn. It was looking really nice. I'm gonna get back to the three, and we'll see some close-ups. Close-ups. Man, I can barely talk sometimes. Definitely got humid all of a sudden. All of a sudden. right back at the most mighty Saturn the old sun and plasma cosmology of course 
Damn, we got a packed house in here. Love it. Good to see everybody. thoughts about the universe. I was watching a lot of videos about light today and just illumination. And I really like this idea of the fact that light is really a circuit in the ether, which is basically inertia. And it's a really great concept where you come together you realize that everything is as you perceive it and it comes to the point in your eye. And then you dissect it all. And you create all these different shapes and sizes and distances. And it's really hard to really experience reality and take out the philosophy and the metaphysics of it all for me. Especially looking at Saturn. What an odd yet so perfectly natural shape and it's just there what's going on Miguel Gonzalez hope you're doing well how's the weather by you Shockwave says Saturn along with Mars and Earth are tilted 23 23 at the 23 23 degrees is Saturn the mind player? <laughs> I don't know, but I do know that we're deeply tied, deeply connected to these planets in wonderful ways. And it's always tripping me out when I think about how we don't really perceive all the tiny creatures that live on our body, and they must have no concept of who we are. It must seem like we're space to them. And then when we look out there, we're like, what are all these planets? What are they doing? And maybe the planets don't even notice us because we're so small. It really makes you wonder what's on the surface of Saturn. I was seeing this whole stuff about gas giants, but I really think it's kind of a misnomer or misinterpretation. I feel like even gas giants really have surf surfaces or lattice structures under the outer cloud layer. I bet if I process this, I'd get some of that North Pole hexagon, but we'll see. You can really see that great shadow behind. And you can see the refraction, the diffraction patterns, the Fraunhofer going red and blue. Yeah, Buried Axe Blade. I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again. So check out the description of this video on all streams for a good list of Electric Universe and Plasma Cosmologists. 
from Greg J to Kronos to see the pattern um, to just Electric Universe Eyes and Electric Terror Vision, Suspicious Observers, and uh, Halton Arp and Sky Scholar, Thunderbolts Project. I say it every time, repetition makes real. And the other thought I had the other, uh, yesterday, I think it was, or yeah, I think it was yesterday. But maybe I'm bugging. Was it yesterday? <laughs> I did a I did a stream recently where I was talking about how I think information is similarly fractal to the way we see physics and geometry. So just like we see the scales of things from little bacteria and quanta to our size on the scales of magnitude to celestial objects, we see all this different geometry and recursive spirals, patterns hexagons, dodecahedrons, toroidals, shapes. But I also think that information and language and art is actually similar to that uh, geometry, but in terms of culture. So all the ideas that we have fractal in probably the same ways that these large objects appear. If that sort of makes sense. But that's what I've been mulling over. Oh, Sky Scholar, um, you know his father passed away, and so he made that last video. I think he'll be back soon. He's really incredible, especially with the whole black body radiation, and uh, man, my brain is melted. But uh, the crystal lattice, sun, liquid metallic hydrogen sun um, with the surface. I mean, he also points it out in a way that the way the Thunderbolts Project points out the comet not being a sublimating snowball. He just shows the transverse waves on the, on the sun's surface, and you really see these ripples like in a pond on the surface of the sun. So the sun is not like, um, it's really not what they say it is. But I really wonder, like it would be great to see Pierre-Marie Robitaille discuss, um, like just have a chat with Donald Scott for example, about the electric sun. I don't know if they necessarily agree exactly one-to-one, -one, but stuff like that is, is where I'd like it to, to go. And let's see. Yeah, also check out the electric view. I forgot to mention that. I've been hanging out with those guys. They were very kind to invite me to the show. And so a couple of the recent shows have me just hanging out in the background, talking some stuff. Future ones will include something, uh, definitely a moon show, where I'm going to try and kind of link up the audio from Skype from there with some of this footage, and we can go to town on space footage discussion. Finally getting, got my Skype and my Discord together. Just have to figure out how to run it through OBS. So... Buried Axe Blade says, didn't Tesla say he chatted with the Saturnians, or was it a different planet? Oh no, to lifted spirits. To lifted spirits for Sky Scholar. Mm. Yeah, I think that was the last video. He, um, he was taking some time off. I mean, that guy's just an incredible type of human being. Um, yes, indeed, electric. I've said it a bunch of times on my show, but Electric Universe was finally one of those revelations to me that kind of uh, made me stop and think in a way that I'd never thought before, which was, it wasn't really an answer to my, uh, to my questions, it was more a way of looking at the world in order to decipher it. And that was really, that is really what's different about plasma cosmology. It's one of these things where you feel very empowered pun intended. And further, you're able to look at mythology from everywhere and decipher it yourself in terms of actual plasma physics events 
completely different than the world we live in right now with popular science. But the only way to combat crap and pop science is to just replace it. Lamenting it only does half the job. Midnight, man, this year has gone by already. By already. It's gone by already. What's up, chat room? Man, it's crazy how time keeps passing and it feels like we're in this loop and only small things change and they turn back around and we watch cycles go by. It must be probably due to the similar things that I was mentioning, like the flow of energy through the universe along certain pathways probably mimics the same sort of culture and life that we lead in terms of events and media even and content probably follows laws of the same geometry. It's really interesting to conceive of things that way because it really gives you the sense that you're a part of it you know, we're all part of this content, content creating content. Sorry about the level. Sometimes. Let's see, was that something? Oh man, check this out. Let's see, am I crazy?
Holy shit. I caught the first Saturn wave. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Whoa. Okay, guys, gals, everybody. So that's, that's what, that's a plasma event right there, right? That's not an airplane, I don't think. So that's history, I guess, in some context. <laughs> <laughs> like, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, what's that? Uh, yeah. Somebody jump back and take a quick screen cap of that for posterity. I would just say so. Let me know if y'all saw that. <laughs> that was freaking crazy. Um, my regulars know... Actually, I'm sure all of y'all have seen that Jupiter wave. Yeah, that just happened for sure. That was the craziest freaking thing. Craziest thing. I'm just giving y'all a second to catch up. <sighs> whoa, 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 it's just crazy. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's nuts. I mean... What is that? <laughs> Sorry, my reaction's all over the place, but like, <laughs> that was just nuts. Um, I know there's like a 30 second lag probably, but uh, <laughs> totally. First time, that's for sure. I, I'm almost certain. Um, maybe somebody has caught it before, but uh, so that's uh, moon wave, Jupiter wave, and Saturn wave. Very likely like this plasma thing that I've mentioned. I don't know, I mean, it could be something else, but it really feels like, like what, what is it, midnight on September 2nd, 2019, pretty much. Uh, wow, I'm just blown away by the serendipity of being live tonight, of all things, right? That's just nuts. <laughs> I mean, that literally shifted the whole damn thing. Yeah, like, I've just seen it, like, got to make a video on that for sure. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, y'all. Um, yo, so give me a few. I'm going to take a quick break right here and take um, a recording of this. So I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm going to switch to the wide shot. I mean, well, while I take a second, think about the odds of that happening on the 3X clear night with all the storms, I happen to be pointed at that, not at Pluto or Jupiter. Um, the odds, the statistical odds of capturing that, of that event with that kind of magnification while zoomed in is like <laughs> at, uh, astronomical, uh, if you'll pardon the pun. So give me a few, I'm gonna switch to the other computer and take a screen cap of, of this in case the stream, something happens to the stream. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes.
I was able to capture that on my desktop. Hell yeah. Man, that is just the weirdest, coolest looking thing. <laughs> it's like somebody twisting a prism. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe it. some water. Man, my head is killing me for some reason. I just got a headache. But, um, yeah, I'm going to put a video up after the stream. It really looks like a piece of glass. It's just crazy. I feel like, I don't know, I guess Saturn is much smaller than Jupiter or the moon, obviously. So it looked a little bit different, like the, the ripple across Jupiter. I don't know, I mean, it basically had the same signature of like one wave, then a, a, a pause, and then another one. And, you know, I think maybe wave is really not the right word for it. I feel like it's actually just a perturbation in the field. It's a field shift, pro probably. So, um, I had a cloaked craft passing by. It's pretty funny. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. But that must have been huge. Fantasy saying it's a digital camera malfunction. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, I've talked about it in the past, but it doesn't really seem like it. It basically almost... I mean, the occurrence of it would be so much more. Plus, it's happened on both cameras, on three different cameras, on the A6000, on the A63, and the A65, in different contexts, um, and on different telescopes. Um, I don't know. You can review it yourself, and everybody's open to their, uh, entitled to their opinion, at, opinion of it, of course, so you don't have to believe what I think. But, um, no, I, I don't think anyone's implying that I'm playing tricks, but, like, um, anyway, it's so hard to, to achieve that effect. It's such a specific effect. It's like, anyway, you put that against the Jupiter um, wave video that I have and the other lunar one, and they all basically have the same sort of trajectory, the same momentum, same type of definition. Other people have captured it. John McKeon captured the Jupiter wave a year before I did, and it has the same type of effect, like a piece of glass being um, between uh, us and the image. And Barry Daxblade says, Dorian Gray causes digital malfunctions. Certainly not, sir. <laughs> I take... Um, no, I mean, of course not. I don't think it has anything to do with storms. Last time the Jupiter wave was like on a calm, like calm, calm season, rather. Um, Fantasy says, I'm saying that the cameras don't fault like that. They definitely don't fault like that. Plus they'd, they'd fault, um, anyway, they have for certain signatures. Like when I switch the recording on and off, you see like it flickers and it does all the like splits it into boxes and has the RGB shift. But things like that are very specific. I'm actually, like, if you zoom, get back a few and take a look at what I'm talking about, you'll see it's, like, very specific.
Yo, it's, uh, it's all good. Like, unless fantasy, you think I'm like making the effect on purpose. But if you're thinking it's just like the camera, then maybe it's the camera. Who knows? Um, what's up, Super Musty? Let's just keep it civil. Like, fantasy, if you don't believe it, it's fine. Like, really, stream goes on, right? It's all about being kind and chilling with one another. It's not about, like, who believes what, about, like, some event in space or in a camera, whatever you believe, right? I don't know. It's all good. Like, I'd be the first to, it's not even Occam's Razor, it's more like I take a lot of pride in kind of debunking um, silly interpretations of, not silly, just misinterpretations of space videos, for example, like saying things a UFO if it's Jupiter because you haven't looked through a telescope, things like that. So I'd be very, um, I'd be the first to say, oh my God, that must be the, like a camera effect or an atmospheric thing. Just can't find anything on that. Plus, like, the camera doesn't do that for anyone else um, in the world. So, it's just a weird thing. So John McKeon captured it on, like, one of those ASI astro cams in black and white, and he had the same effect. Crow captured it on a DSLR, which is different than this mirrorless camera. And uh, the other part about cameras, they don't refresh um, from top right to bottom left or diagonally across the screen, um, especially with a Bayer matrix. They kind of frack, like they, they, um, they quantize in kind of a pattern. They don't really like scan line like a copying machine. Anyway. Those are some thoughts.
Mary Mary. Have a good night. Thank you so much. I will be as safe as possible. Appreciate your presence. And uh, catch you soon, I hope. We've got some mooners soon. talk about that a little bit and shockwave can back me up um but when we were in the sheath of the brown dwarf star saturn so you know the the light on earth was supposed to be pretty much kind of this mix of red and blue light coming at us encasing us in this kind of violet glow with mist falling off Saturn, and not really like rain, but almost like fog, mist, falling down on Earth, proto-Earth. And, uh, yeah, that's the start of it. And so you can imagine in under kind of this type of light, you'd have different types of creatures that are similar to us, but probably had different physical features, like um, some postulate that they had large eyes, larger eyes, like the whole anime manga trope of having characters with huge eyeballs is from this kind of plasma mythology. Um, let's see, let me keep the music going on in the background. Let's see what Shockwave says. Like a wise for one thing, we could see our children have kids and theirs and theirs and theirs and we could impart knowledge to many generations hey thanks Kimberly and yeah so that was kind of the idea is that there was a different type of um, human I guess on proto-earth inside the ground dwarf glow of Saturn, and uh, I think Gray does a wonderful job, his channel is in the description, he does these long, kind of hour-long videos, talking about his own ideas, and reading other stories, and having other presenters on, who talk about really this purple dawn, when this time occurred, and, you know, is this something that happened 10, 12,000 years ago, or 50,000?
Chakra is saying larger skulls and brains, right? That's another idea. And, uh, you know, whether that meant they were smarter or just physically larger, that's not really necessarily figured out, I think. Uh, dude Highness. Um, this says I'm a bit lost. Nice view here, just lurking. So just, I'm kind of deep on the, going deep on the Electric Universe cosmology. I have a lot of links in the description of this video if you're interested in it at all. It's essentially this concept of space that is really, essentially our, our pop science idea of space now really removes the electrical nature of space. And this guy named Emmanuel Velikovsky wrote this book in the 40s called Worlds in Collision and Earth in Upheaval and many others where he postulated that Earth went through a catastrophe period about seven to 12,000 years ago, or maybe, or maybe sooner, uh, which uh, was due to planets exchanging electrical plasma discharge and creating all these different features that we see. And then further, it, it implies so many other things like if electromagnetic forces are fundamentally part of nature, then you have all these other implications about physics, history, speed of light, distance in space, history of Earth, history of the moon, geology, weather. Many ideas come out of this. Right, so some of the ideas also include the fact that electric charge and density determine what we perceive as gravity. And in my perspective, I follow a lot of what uh, Ken Wheeler talks about in terms of the mutual mass acceleration as opposed to gravity, and essentially that the ether, really, which is an inertia, is really everything. And that inertia really is dark matter, is the jinn, it's God, it's whatever you want it to be. But really there's just one thing and everything comes from that. Purple haze days, <laughs> exactly. Chakra says, I say that the uh, event 12,900 years ago changed everything. So there were certain events, and of course there are, there are events logged in biblical references and biblical, his, biblical history and Roman and Greek mythology and Hindu mythology and Chinese mythology and American Indian, Native American. All these stories that now we treat pop and pop science as myth are actually much more historically accurate but they need to be interpreted through the understanding that electrical forces govern the universe and then things make sense and science becomes predictive again and fun instead of it being really dicey and constantly being baffled by new discoveries as opposed to really understanding things versus describing things. Very different. What's up, Galacticus? Shout out to UK. Dude Highness says, thanks for the info, I'll catch up on my reds. Sounds good, man. I just, um, yeah, don't mean to beat people over the head with EU. That's just me thinking through ideas, and if people are interested, they should look into it because it really, it, it definitely fulfills <laughs> that curious bone. I think gravity is just one of those things that science really describes and really doesn't understand. And if you watch Ken Wheeler's understanding um, description of gravity, you'll see that this idea that things accelerate towards one another, um, which is the magnetic 
uh, effect. And this is, at certain scales, what we see as gravity. It's very simple. It doesn't require all these extraneous elements. I explain it quite poorly, but I, I'm learning to understand it. <laughs> it takes time. We've, we've spent so many years being taught uh, very convoluted ways of thinking about the world in order to really just throw us off track. Michael Wise makes the point about the blueberries, says the blueberry metal spheres found on Mars and spheres found all over Earth are electrical phenomenon. Spheres are birthed out of planets in electricity. Essentially the sphere, we were talking a little bit about that today on the electric view, um, or we have been, or, and they have been too, about how these spherules can be you know, scaled up in size. Potentially this is really how planets form, or asteroids or meteorites form, and they're just along a different growth, uh, where we see them, they're along different growth periods. But the, what was it, the Costa Rican um, giant blueberries? Like maybe the, that's how planets are fused or like pinched. That's just an idea. Maybe I'm wrong, Shockwave. Uh, it says, I say outright that Venus came out of Saturn's southern hemisphere. Damn. That's a pretty bold statement, but could be right. Literally just shot out. Just like a tree giving birth. I know I said a tree giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I gotta say, I got to say.
Yo, yo, so I'll try and explain a little bit of what I'm thinking. So the dingo ate my baby. <laughs> so funny. I don't know how that became just such a cultural meme. I did see that as a kid, actually. I saw that, that Australian crazy movie. Anyway, the idea behind electricity and geometry is really fundamentally that electricity governs everything or the dielectric field really, not electricity necessarily. The dielectric field is uh, labeled many things by different people. Some it's counter space, some it's dark matter, some it's the ether, um, some it's God. So it's the conscious dielectric field, or at least this is how I see it. And so the, the, this is mixing Thunderbolts project with uh, Ken Wheeler mixed with Halton Arp and almost everything else I watch kind of filters down this idea of what I think space is. So if you have ever-expanding shells of information, really the, the world and the universe is information. And uh, the way I understand it is that we're in a dielectric conscious field of what is essentially plasma or dielectricity. It's not electricity, it's dielectricity, which means, I guess it has, it, it has the ability to turn into, or to affect things magnetically, is, is sort of how I understand it. And then, the idea is that light does not travel, and things don't travel or move, there's just a perturbation in the field, and the field is basically everything around us and the field is what everything is made of. But there's really no field. It's, just, it's not a thing until illumination occurs, and then you see the thing. And so there's this very fascinating underlying electromagnetic understanding of the universe, which allows you to consider all these other things. The same way water turns into vapor and ice, and it's also water, the same way the, the ether, the plasma, the dielectric conscious field turns into you and me, and ideas, and planets, and interactions between planets, everything we see, and everything we don't see, is plasma, and it's just one thing, and something akin to sano, sano luminescence, really. So vibrations in the dielectric field is what we perceive as information, matter. Shockwave says dipolar, dipolar. See, I'm not 100% sure. I feel like it's dipolar. The dipole is something else. Uh, it's just that everything has a positive and negative to it, and the spin is basically fluctuating at any very given moment. There's nothing really static about the universe at all. Everything is fundamentally moving all the time, but at the same time, it's not really moving. It just seems like it's moving along a vector, but it's actually being um, perturbed in the field. And so it's almost... I've been trying to understand it from Ken Wheeler's perspective and then kind of fit it into like how the Birkeland currents and electric filaments would connect everything from the quantum level or the tiny macroscopic level to humans um, and up to planets and larger than that, basically filamentary electrical um, dendrites or filaments. But are the, the, these filaments exist, right? But they don't they're not seen or experienced until they're illuminated or perturbed or acted upon or vibrated. So those are what we think, I think people consider waves, but really the, the entire thing that includes us is basically waving. So there's no such thing as a wave, it's just that we wave. Like a, it's, it's, a, it's really deep, it's complicated but there's some sort of uh, really nice idea of 
think about it holistically as one thing with a lot of different modalities like vapor, water, um, and ice to, to water. You know, so the ether is basically gravity, it's magnetism, it's light, it's all these different phenomena that we see from one thing. And in a way, it kind of mimics what string theory was really wanting to get to, to after all these, you know, 40 years of string theory was trying to get to really this unified understanding of the universe. But that's really more so uh, a physical phenomenon of uh, a filamentary electricity that can underlie the universe that we can really see as opposed to um, well, as opposed to quantum particles like strings that we don't really see. Anyway, man, got melt, brain melt, <laughs> just reading the comments. Uh, let's see. Has, has chat room melted down? Maybe it's time to call it. Chakra says dipole is dielectric one and the same. Okay. Sorry, I'm totally having a meltdown right now, but <laughs> not a meltdown, but just brain shut off for a second. So I'm just gonna take a quick break. I'll have a smoke outside and get some air. I think it just gets very hot in front of these double computer monitors. Everybody's, it's uh, lots of energy in the chat room tonight. mediate better than to ask, you know, the fact that we appreciate that we're all here and alive and not being eaten <laughs> by a larger animal um, and that we're not being like in, like I'm in the path of a storm, but I'm alive right now. And so we, we can appreciate that. So maybe discussions about, uh, you know, photography and I don't know, what goes on in the YouTube chat room should be taken really lightly. That's my recommendation or my suggestion. So I'm sorry, I don't want to judge anybody or mess with anybody. People get really sensitive about it, and I understand that, but we still got to just be respectful of one another and pass those frozen brownies. That sounds really good, actually. Let me get some, something cold to snack on. I'll be back in a few.
peeps. Actually, Saturn is setting, and I'm kind of setting too. This has been a good show. A couple hours of amazing space and heated debates, which is always good. And um, not to trigger anybody, but I'm pretty certain it's some sort of some sort of plasma event, some sort of atmospheric thing that we see. I'm pretty excited to go and make that little cut and do the edit of the first Saturn wave or Saturn perturbation <laughs> that's been recorded so far, I think. And we'll see what people think of it. I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of opinions and that's cool. Regardless of what it is or isn't, I was pretty excited by it. I'm always excited by um, not just, it's not novelty is a bad word, but new experiences like that. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm just like, I'm gonna go watch it a few hundred times and slow it down and uh, maybe I'll put, I gotta put together like a compilation of that and the Jupiter one and the moon one. Um, yeah, Shocker says the fake space wave was friggin' awesome. Pretty funny. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh man, cold water was the, did the trick. Just had half a bottle of filtered water. I'm gonna have to go fill a few more bottles of this, but... Oh yeah. So, thank you all so much for hanging out every time. It really means a lot and saying nice things about my music. It definitely makes it worthwhile. I know it's a bit like all over the place when it comes to EU philosophy and cosmo cosmogony tonight. So if I lost you, please do a little bit of read-ups on EU. Links in the description. And, Pat and I have a ton of playlists, like my liked videos, and I have a ton of uh, electric discharge in the lab. Stuff that's worth looking through. Appreciate it, Shockwave. I will catch you on the on the chords. Thank you, Eat. Thank you, Kimberly and Buried Axe Blade and Kimmy. And Fantasy and 24-7. Bon Dia. Michael Wise, great, great discussion, chat. C Smith, take care. Happy Honey Big Bear and Kimberly Schick and who else we got? I know Mary was here and she left. Galacticus was here. Galacticus, thank you. Dude Highness, take care. That's all I got in my list. I will duck from Dorian Gray. Hopefully it'll be good tomorrow too. I'll hop on for a quick one. Duplicat, I appreciate that. Stay electric. Michael Wise says, it can be frustrating trying to get your thoughts out on chat when it takes hours of conversation. It's true, it's just a lot of different ideas in my mind and uh, sometimes I forget the words. Like, I'm looking at the screens and trying to read the chat at the same time, it definitely gets you fumbled some, some. but I, I, appreciate everybody, I appreciate everybody bearing with me as I try and get my thoughts across. 
So, also, happy birthday, Kimmy. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, Saturn Wave. Heck yeah. So super cool. Um, video coming out, I don't know, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Nah, a couple hours. <laughs> I'm going to watch it a few times first and put together a clip for y'all. Let's let the Saturn drift and call it a night for tonight. Multiplier, this drift goes so fast. All right, I'll catch y'all real soon. Take care, everybody. Good night. birthday man <laughs> you didn't tell me but happy birthday anyway happy birthday to whoever wants a wish I think it's kind of a present to exist every day so happy birthday to us all I, I'm out <laughs>